This cheap fiber can help control blood sugar, blood pressure, cholesterol, and triglycerides. It aids satiety, weight loss, and improves gut function by regulating bowel activity. In this video, I'll discuss the pros and cons, including three risks and situations where you should avoid this fiber. I'll also cover how to use it, the most common form, precautions, and compare it to other fibers like chia and flaxseed. Can this affordable fiber outperform chia or flaxseed in terms of health benefits and how does it stack up against oats? Is it better or worse? I'm going to give you an in-depth look at this fiber. There's a lot of scientific research about it. Let's start with six key benefits. The first benefit of this well-known and popular fiber is psyllium. Have you ever heard of it before? Well, psyllium comes from a plant. So what exactly is psyllium? This psyllium powder, for instance. Psyllium is a soluble fiber that expands 20 times in water. It forms a gel-like liquid when mixed. This is one of psyllium's key features. Why is that? As it expands, it aids intestinal transit. Per 100 G, it contains about 85 G of pure fiber. That's quite significant. Oats have 10 to 15 G fiber per 100 G, so psyllium's much higher. The top benefit, it regulates bowel movements. We need fiber for healthy digestion. The daily recommended fiber intake is around 30 to 35 grams. Some older sources suggest 25 to 30, but this range has been slightly expanded because it's not that much, right? People think, let's eat lots of fiber like 50 or 60 grams. It'll be good for us, right? But the answer is balance. Too much fiber can hinder absorption of nutrients like calcium, okay? So the recommendation is about 30 grams per day. When you eat fiber, the intestines absorb water forming stool. This helps with digestion. Some articles claim psyllium is a laxative but it actually helps regulate through fiber okay that's the scientific evidence so it can help with diarrhea but mainly with constipation too we know that consuming fiber helps regulate digestion and reach the minimum recommended amount studies show that consuming enough fiber not just psyllium but others too can lower bowel cancer risk by reducing exposure to harmful substances in the gut so it benefits gut transit and overall intestinal health I'll highlight the main benefit, improved bowel function. Some studies suggest it may help with IBS, Crohn's, and ulcerative colitis. But I won't focus on that here, as the research is limited for these conditions. It's complex. We can't just recommend high soluble fiber for everyone. So I'll add this disclaimer here. More studies are needed to prove benefits for Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Agreed? The second major benefit in my field is one I really like. I've often mentioned how fiber reduces a meal's glycemic impact. What's that? Adding fiber before or during a meal helps your body manage blood sugar better. Why? A, it slows absorption. The right amount of fiber slows absorption, reducing blood sugar spikes. This is a big question, okay? Many people wonder, so I'll explain. Are blood sugar spikes bad? What do you think? You probably said yes, right? The answer is it depends on the person. For diabetics, it's really bad because they can't handle it well. It causes a blood sugar spike and the body lacks the tools to manage it. Often, the person is insulin resistant. We produce more insulin, but the tissue resists it. Insulin can't move sugar from the blood into cells and muscles to create energy. So in this case, it's harmful. For those with healthy metabolism and no insulin issues, the body can handle blood sugar spikes. That's why people say blood sugar spikes are natural and harmless. If you eat soon after, your body can manage it, okay? But for diabetics, this is harmful as it causes blood sugar fluctuations, okay? Especially spikes, which increase the risk of heart attacks, strokes, and damage to organs like kidneys and eyes. So it's crucial to avoid this. Consuming fiber, like psyllium in question here, helps control these fluctuations. It can stabilize blood sugar levels, which is a significant benefit. I always want to clarify that this video isn't sponsored. I'm not paid to praise or criticize psyllium, and I'll discuss its drawbacks too. This isn't a sales pitch. I'm sharing info to help you manage health issues naturally. The third benefit on our list is that consuming this fiber can help lower bad cholesterol. Why? As a soluble fiber, it works in the gut 
to help with cholesterol and triglyceride levels. I'll compare it to chia later and discuss which fiber might be better, but this benefit is well studied. Cholesterol management. If you're concerned about cholesterol, eat enough fiber to help eliminate and stabilize cholesterol levels. Another blood fat to consider is triglycerides. Triglycerides aren't cholesterol, but they're a blood fat and a risk factor for heart disease. Studies show it also benefits triglyceride control by improving absorption, carb metabolism, and regulating digestion, plus other factors I'll mention, okay? So the cholesterol issue is very important. The fourth benefit, which I also really like, is weight control. All these benefits are excellent, but how? Why would fiber help with weight control? When you consume the ideal amount of fiber, you feel fuller for longer. What does that mean? If your lunch has fiber, you'll stay full longer, eat less, control your calorie intake, and this helps manage your weight. But I heard psyllium speeds up metabolism. That's false, okay? It doesn't speed things up, but it helps control satiety and slows down digestion, like gastric emptying, which can be beneficial. There are many studies on this, including meta-analyses. If you'd like, I can go into more detail about a specific benefit, citing studies more thoroughly. The fifth benefit, there are others, but I had to pick a few, right? And I chose the benefit for high blood pressure. Did you know psyllium can help lower blood pressure if you have hypertension? It works through various mechanisms. One mechanism is through better weight control. Another is by lowering food's glycemic index, which reduces insulin spikes. Sometimes people don't handle insulin well, as we discussed. Insulin affects the kidneys by reabsorbing sodium, which brings water with it. This can increase blood pressure and cause fluid retention in our body. So this interesting mechanism shows a different function of insulin than what's commonly known, right? We usually think insulin just moves sugar from blood to cells, but it has other effects on our body too. This is very recent knowledge. That alone was worth your like. If you haven't liked the video yet, this info is worth subscribing and turning on notifications. I always share the latest scientific findings. Now, let's talk about how to take it and the risks. Three situations I want to highlight here, then I'll compare the fibers and what are the risks. There are three. First, it can expand up to 20 times, forming a gel that might obstruct the intestine or esophagus in rare cases. These are rare, but can happen if people don't follow the minimum fluid intake guidelines. I've seen people put it in food or take it pure. Taking it without water or juice can be risky, so I suggest you never do that, okay? Taking it without enough liquid risk bowel obstruction. Also, be careful with psyllium if you have a fecaloma. Don't just take it. There are risks to consider. Psyllium may reduce absorption of some medications if you take it together or shortly after within an hour without respecting the interval it can be problematic. A classic example is thyroid hormone medication and if you're taking thyroid hormone in the morning and then take psyllium it can affect absorption. This interaction can seriously reduce the medication's effectiveness which is often crucial for treatment. People might struggle to stabilize their condition if they're doing things that interfere with thyroid hormone absorption. Other medications that affect stomach acidity, like pantoprazole or esomprazole, can also be affected. These medications can also interact with psyllium. Taking psyllium together with these drugs may reduce their effectiveness. But I especially want to emphasize thyroid hormone medications, so, so I suggest waiting at least two hours between doses, okay? To avoid the risk of reduced hormone or thyroid absorption, which can cause fluctuations, sometimes too high, sometimes too low, which is extremely common. The third risk, which needs attention, is that it can increase gas and bloating. So those prone to this, who often get bloated, should be careful with psyllium, but pay close attention to the two main risks. What's the general recommendation? What's the dose? And the amount of liquids, another crucial factor. Remember the studies on diabetes, cholesterol, and weight management I mentioned? Most studies use doses between 10 and 15 grams of psyllium daily. In my practice, I find 10 grams often works well without risking excess fiber intake. So it's important to highlight this because excess fiber also has risks, as you've seen, right? Even taking all precautions, consuming too much fiber can have consequences like reduced nutrient absorption 
And it's important to note, what exactly is 10 grams of fiber? Two teaspoons. Level, okay? Don't heap the teaspoon or you'll end up consuming a much larger amount. It's also important to consult a nutritionist to adapt this for you. This isn't a recommendation for everyone, but discuss this option with your health care provider. Remember, for every 5 grams, use at least 250 milliliters of liquid. That's a medium glass or more to avoid the risk of obstruction I mentioned, okay? Now, what about timing? Well, that depends on the individuals. Some people prefer mornings, especially if they're not on other meds like levothyroxine that I mentioned. Others prefer before noon, so it really varies. There's no set time that everyone must follow. It. And which one's the best? What are the benefits? Pros and cons of chia, flax psyllium, you see? I always talk a lot about chia here. If we're talking about properties like good fats or anti-inflammatory benefits, chia is better, okay? It has more benefits. Psyllium is more of a pure fiber. For glucose control and gut health, psyllium has a slight edge. Got it? So it can vary. Compared to oats, psyllium generally has the advantage. Why? Because oats have a significant portion of their composition, right? 60-65% more than half is carbs and sugars. So for diabetics, you might consume more sugar with oats. It's better to choose other fibers like chia, psyllium, or even flaxseed, okay? It's an excellent option. I really like it. Folks, you ask my personal opinion. I use more chia daily, but psyllium's great too. Now I'll suggest a video about nighttime diabetes signs and control tips. People with high blood sugar may have odd symptoms indicating diabetes at night. I suggest watching it. Click here to see the video. Take care. See you next time.